a few moments to to load up. OK. All right, I hope that everyone can see that. So um, yes, welcome again. So first of all, what is the Green Homes Grant? So this is funding that's provided by central government um, to support the retrofit of homes. So Wandsworth Council has, sorry, there's uh, some shouting from my children in the background. Uh, Wandsworth has secured funding to deliver energy efficiency and low carbon heating for 70 homes across the borough. And this is quite different from the Green Homes Grant Voucher Scheme, which is being run by central government. So they might have heard about the Green Homes Grant Voucher Scheme. Um, and, and this is different from that. So why should you be interested in this scheme? Well, you can get up to £10,000 worth of improvements for your home if you meet the criteria and you don't have to pay anything. So the improvements will be made to your home uh, and they will make your home warmer and reduce your energy bills as well. And you can have uh, also have things like low carbon heating solutions in stores, such as heat pumps or solar thermal as well. And this um, combined with less energy use can help you reduce your carbon emissions as well as reducing your bills. So you'll be saving money and also you'll be helping the planet by um, combating the main source of uh, climate change, which is fossil fuels. So who is eligible? Once with Green Homes Grant Scheme is not open to all and is targeted at those who are most in need. So the scheme is targeted at those who are in or maybe close to fuel poverty or maybe have quite high bills. Um, this is due to them having lower incomes or, and uh, also less energy efficient homes. So we've already contacted those that we have identified as being potentially most eligible. So um, we've sent out uh, a few hundred letters um, to, to encourage people to, to come in. Uh, and join the join the scheme and we're going to be contacting more people that we think are eligible next week as well um so in terms of eligibility and this is very important that, that you remember this uh, so you must either be an own occupier or private landlord um uh, the household income must be under thirty thousand pounds a year the property must have an epc rating of e f or g and you need to be willing to have the work done to your property as well. So that's the eligible cri eligibility criteria that's been set up by central government. And so we have to make sure that everyone who is um, applying for the scheme meets this criteria. So what can you have installed? Um, there's lots and lots of different energy saving measures that you can have installed. And the good news is that uh, the the ones with Green Homes Grant Scheme can go a bit further than the Green Homes Grant Voucher Scheme, which is a bit more restricted in terms of what you can have done to your home. Um, so you can have insulation put into your home to make it warmer. So this can be external, internal wall, cavity, roof insulation or underfloor or any combination of them all. Uh, you could have air source or potentially even ground source heat pumps. This um, is a, a newer technology you may not be as familiar with, but but this uh, uses electricity to transfer heat from one place to another and then to heat water, which can then heat your home. It's um, I think the best analogy uh, is, is probably um, it's like a refrigerator in reverse. Um, you can also have double glazing and obviously double glazing reduces heat loss. And also it's cuts drafts uh, in your home. You can have uh, solar PV. PV stands for photovoltaic. Um, so this is um, solar panels that produce electricity for your home. Uh, you can also have heating controls put in, and this means that you can better control the temperature of your home and also use less energy. And you can also have solar thermal, and these look a lot like uh, solar panels, uh, but they provide hot water that's heated by the sun to uh, heat your home and also for use for sort of washing up and, and showers and things like that. So one thing I do need to stress is that you cannot have your gas boiler replaced by a new gas boiler using this scheme. This scheme is uh, designed to, to cut fuel bills and to help those who are either in or potentially close to fuel poverty. But also one of the big drivers here is around reducing carbon emissions and helping the environment that way. And therefore swapping out a fossil fuel based gas boiler and then replacing, replacing it with another fossil fuel gas boiler is not the aim of the scheme. So that's not eligible under this scheme. So how can you apply for funding? We've already sent letters out to some people and we're going to be sending them out more. But if you are interested, please email us at greenhomesgrant at wandsworth.gov.uk or you can go to the Wandsworth web website and if you try type in Green Homes Grant or GHG, um, then you can find more information and then you can get in touch with us and we can make sure we can send you an application form. 
So if you think you might be eligible, please do get in touch. So what information do you need to apply? So we need to check that you meet the criteria that's set up by central government, and, and that's a big part of the funding that's been given to us, is we do need to make sure that, that people are eligible and do meet that criteria. So first of all, we need to check that your property has an EPC or an energy performance certificate with a rating of EF or G, and this is at the lower end of energy efficiency. Um, but don't worry if you don't know about that or you're not sure, we can look this up for you. And if you don't have one, we can do an estimate on what it might be the, the rough sort of area that your EPC might be based on sort of uh, information you give us about your house and its location. Uh, we can have a look at that. Uh, if you're already in receipt of some benefits and we have a record of them, then we can quickly check that to verify your income level. Uh, so you won't need to send us as much information. But if we don't have a record, you will need to provide some evidence of income. So this can be wage slips or three months of bank statements. This is all explained in a lot more detail on the application form if you want to apply. Um, so, so this shouldn't be, um, hopefully won't be too much of a burden for those who are applying. And also, if you are really stuck, then we do have a team that, that's working on this and we can help you with it if, if you need, need some extra assistance. So why should you do this scheme and not the government voucher scheme? And um, basically, it's much easier with our scheme. Uh, and Partly, the, the, a large part, in fact, is due to our partner, Retrofit Works, who we'll hear from later, because they'll carry out a whole home assessment to identify what works are suitable, uh, and they will then um, be able to talk you through the options that you have and then decide what's best for your home. So what will increase the energy efficiency to, to the highest level it can be with the money that's available, and also the things that you want to have. It might be that there's a certain thing that you're not comfortable with or you don't really like, and therefore, we can adjust the package around that um, so that it, it's something that suits what you need. They can then arrange the delivery of the works and this will be done with Trustmark contractors. So you know that um, they are reputable and they have fulfilled uh, certain criteria in terms of um, standard of delivery and also being um, um, environmentally compliant with, with certain bits as well. Uh, and they will also check the work. And this makes it much, much easier for you to get the improvements that you want done to your home. So one question is, I rent my home and is this a problem? Well, no, it's not. Bonds with Green Homes Grant Scheme is open to those who privately rent their home. Landlords aren't eligible for the full £10,000, but they can access up to £5,000 for improvement. Um, but they do need, the landlord will need to pay at least a third of the costs of improvement. There's some more information on our website, um, which breaks down the sort of examples of if, you're, if you've got £5,000 worth of improvements that are funded by the grant, then how much would a landlord have to pay? Uh, and then you can explore that there. Um, and also the other thing is that landlords will be able to take advantage of this easier route to access improvements through retrofit works. So if you are a renter, please pass this information on to your landlord. Uh, we still need to check the household income of the person who's renting the property because it's, it's, it's on the person who's occupying the property and is renting it there rather than the landlord's income. And then, as I said, the landlord's eligible £5,000 but must pay at least a third. Um, Unfortunately, if you socially rent your home, then unfortunately you're not eligible. Um, this is because um, the, the funding we've attracted is just looking at private sector rented and own occupied. But if you are a social renter, um, don't worry if you're if you're living in Wandsworth. Um, Wandsworth Council is is looking very hard at what we can do to improve the energy efficiency of the properties um, across the borough. And there's a lot of work that's going on around that. There's um, we have a, a uh, once with environment and sustainability strategy, which is looking in detail at, at some of this, and we've got an action plan that's being reviewed at this moment, and is soon going to go to the committee for decision, um, and that's going to have a lot more actions in there about um, social rented housing and what we can do to, to improve that. So next steps, if we contact you, if we send you a letter, please do respond. To, please do let us know if you're interested, and if you think you're eligible, get in touch with us. Um, and if you can't take part in the scheme, please tell people you think may be able to. And there's also lots of other things you can do to green your home. Um, so there's lots of other energy efficiency tips that you can take part in. So um, please do um, have a look on our website and you can see some more there. OK, so that's the end of my presentation. And I will now hand over to Russell Smith from Retrofit Works, who's going to talk to you a bit more about what Retrofit Works do. Russell.
Oh, hi, can you hear me, Andrew? Oh, hang on. Can you hear me at all? Oh dear. Yes, yes, I can. Okay, all right, right, okay. <laughs> right, brilliant. Thanks. Um, so yeah, hello everybody. Um, <clears throat> so I'm Russell Smith. I'm a man managing director of Retrofit Works. We're ones with based. We're in an office just behind Flip Out on Garrett Lane, uh, which we love. Um, <clears throat> and we're a co-op actually. We're a cooperative. We're not for profit, um, and we are owned by uh, bunches of organisations that want to do this work, but they can't join the co-op if they're not good. So we have a really clear process that means that the, the assessors, the surveyors, the contractors that join. Uh, are, are thoroughly vetted and they are, as, as Andrew quite rightly said, they're Trustmark members. So Trustmark vet us to make sure we are doing their vetting. So, you know, it's, it's quite a well defined route uh, to make sure we're sending people to homes that are really good. Um, <clears throat> the process that we go through uh, is, is well established for us. We've been doing it for a very long time. Um, and the first port of call is for you to meet uh, 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 a home energy efficiency expert in your home. Uh, who will come and assess the building. We have to do that. That's one of the re requirements of a grant. We have to uh, do a thorough assessment of the building itself. <clears throat> In some instances where you might be particularly worried um, about uh, the COVID situation, uh, I've got two uh, two things to tell you really. Uh, one is we have a really thorough risk assessment uh, process by which we go through uh, a, a couple of discussions. We assess whether we ought to be coming or not rather than what you sometimes might expect with delivery drivers or other contractors they just turn up with a mask on and think everything's going to be fine we don't do that we we have a process by which we'll have a thorough discussion about whether we should or not and we avoid coming at all costs but clearly you might understand if we're looking to work out whether you should have some things installed in your building we are kind of going to need to see the building however it might well be that you're quite handy with a mobile phone or you can take good pictures or you've got some layout drawings of your building, you could send them to us on an email, we might be able to avoid that. So we, we can, we'll have the, the guys in the office in Wandsworth will have a chat with you about what, what we can do there. But, but ultimately we do some modeling and as Andrew pointed out, we, we create what we call a whole house plan. And what this does, it will uh, enable you to basically see everything that should happen to your building to get to zero carbon. We think that's a really just a nice element of the scheme irrespective. But the important thing about the scheme is that we, it's not an unlimited amount of money and there's only certain things we could do for your building so that will be at the top of the list so we could do those things but it gives you the opportunity to see what else you need to do at some point so we'll carry out that work uh, for that report we'll discuss it with you uh, we'll obviously be wanting to make sure that you get the maximum benefit from the money that's available um, and the key thing for us is that we are modeling uh, we're doing some maths we're showing you the best things that you could have for your money so quite often we find that we've got a whole bunch of people that have got a, a pre uh, preordained idea of what they think is important. And I can bet your bottom dollar, it's probably double glazing. Um, and uh, just to give you a bit of an idea, if you change single glazed windows to double glazed windows, the payback of that is about 90 years. So when you when you look at a, a grant like this, it's probably one of the last things we would look to do. However, if your windows are about to fall out, then that goes to the top of the list. So these are discussions that we have. It's not all about the maths. We want to make sure that you get the right solution for you. But we do have to make sure that, you know, it's a say it's a building that's uh, eligible. We will be EF or G rated. We'll do this, this this modeling. We've got to get it up to a certain target. We've got to try and aim for a C rating of your property. So, you know, there are things that we need to work within to make sure we get the right answer. So we'll work with you to make that happen. Um, once we've agreed on what to go ahead with, we will try and get three quotes uh, for your work. Um, uh, using contractors that are already on our team that will work in your area. Um, and once we've established that the good best value for money for, for the work, uh, we'll work with you to um, get a date in the diary. And we want to get that date in soon. We've got to try and get this work done by the end of March. Um, and uh, we will oversee it. So you won't just get left with a contractor. Our guys will make sure that the contractor does a good job, uh, that any concerns you might have are addressed. Um, uh, to give you an idea, we ran a program for the Greater London Authority um, uh, that we dealt with 1500 homes just like this all across London. And typically those sort of schemes have you know, quite a number of people that might lose interest halfway through. We, we had only a 5% dropout over that entire period. So, and that's because we, we try and make sure our retrofit coordinators, as we call them, really look after householders. So don't be afraid of getting involved. Don't think you're just going to get lobbed into a process and not know what's going on. 
we've got two lovely uh, people in the office that will make sure they're always the end of the telephone and the coordinators will always make sure the contractors are doing the right thing too. Um, so um, that's really uh, sort of the, the, the key parts I think will be worth stressing, although Andrew probably point out some things I've missed. But one thing I wanted to point out to you that it does cost us money to do surveys. So please, if you're serious, get in touch. If you think you just fancy one of our glossy reports and you don't really want to do the work, please do uh, avoid um, uh, blocking our, uh, our timeline, if you like, because we've got a lot to do in a short period of time and we, we can't afford to have that those wasted wasted events, really. Um, on, the, on the other thing as well, you, you might have seen uh, in the headlines the last couple of days some headlines about the Green Homes Grant. Those headlines were about the voucher scheme. They weren't about this scheme. Uh, Wandsworth Council already has the money to pay for this. And as a contractor, I'm quite happy about that. So as long as we do a good job and you're happy with what's been done, uh, we get paid. That The problems you might have seen in the headlines are, 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 are quite... Um, uh, are quite tough on, on, on the government in the way that they run that that scheme. This is a different thing altogether. I just it's important to stress that. OK, Andrew, I think that's probably all I, I needed to say right now. Brilliant. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Russell. Um, yeah, actually, the, uh, there's a couple of questions that have come up in the chat, um, so uh, I'll ask those. Um, so one was from Suzanne Mitchell. Suzanne, would you like to ask the question? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we are trying to do work on our property and we have done some already. I don't think we're eligible for this scheme, but I have been trying for ages to work out how I get in touch with Retrofit Works because I want advice as a householder on the best contractors to use and the best things to do with my house. Um, could I pay for a survey if that's the issue? Basically, is Retrofit Works only for um organizations and not for individuals no not, not at all thanks for the question i'm delighted that you've brought it up <laughs> no so um um retrofit works is it, it works with a whole bunch of uh, uh, people across uh, the country actually to set up uh, energy efficiency schemes and the one that we're running in london is called ecoferb uh, e-c-o-f-u-r-b uh, so ecoferb.com if you go onto that website you'll see the service that we've got available for Londoners there. It's, yeah, so, you, yeah, you, you pay for the service in, in the first instance, uh, and, and then we, 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 we run exactly the same protocols that I've described earlier on. So, yeah, we'd be glad to hear from you. <clears throat> Great. Um, thank you. So there's uh, a question from Stanislas. Stanislas, would you like to uh, ask your question, or I can read it out? Sure, hi. Um, Yes, so I already applied for the greenhouse grant through the government scheme uh, for flat roof insulation work as a primary measure. And uh, I also wanted to apply for double glazed windows as a secondary measure. Um, the quotes which we got from local Wandsworth roofers uh, were initially rejected mm. um, by the government scheme because they didn't have what is called the path, the pass mm. to the path certification on top of Trustmark. Sure. But so we reapplied with another installer that was on the government's list. That's one thing. And then we also wanted to apply for the, the glazed windows, double glazed windows uh, as secondary measures. And we contacted every installer in the London region and they all said, no way um it's not worth our time or effort so so we 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 can't even apply for it so i'm wondering through if through this scheme from uh, of when Wandsworth, this is something that we could uh, we could figure out well i say uh, thanks for your question i mean ultimately it's about for this particular scheme is whether you meet the uh, the entry criteria so if your your property is ef or g rated uh, if you've got a family income of, uh, of 30,000 or, or, or below, then yes. And I, I would say it would be great if, if you do uh, qualify. If we do try and do the things you want done quickly before you do the other things, because you might your house might be too good afterwards to qualify for the scheme. So uh, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't stop your so have a think about whether you're eligible or not. Uh, if you are, I would just get in touch with the email address that Andrew put up earlier on, mm -hmm. and um, we can we can push you through. Yep, um, I I 
totally agree with that. Um, if, if you think you're eligible, then please do get in touch. Um, if you don't have the vouchers approved yet, then there's, it doesn't matter if you apply via us. It's only if you have the, the vouchers approved and kind of sent to you already under the, the Green Homes Grant voucher scheme run by central government, um, then then it's a bit, it's a lot more tricky then. Um, but, but if you haven't got them already approved, then yes, if you're eligible, then, then please do join the scheme. Um, Suman, you have your hand up and you asked a question. Um, go ahead. Um, yeah. First is that does this all have to be done by the end of March? Because somebody said that Russell mentioned it. But just linked to that, are you eligible to apply for both schemes, like the government scheme and the Wandsworth scheme, if you meet the criteria, or is it just one of the schemes that you have to apply for? So you have to apply for one or the other. You can't have funding okay. from both. Right. Thank um, you. So you. So you do need to pick pick one of them, whichever one fits best for you. Um, I would say if you're eligible. I meet the criteria, then then go with this scheme because we do think it, it's a much better yeah. approach. Um, and and Russell and his team will be able to 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 sort out the works for you a lot quicker than than possibly if you're doing it yourself. Um, in terms of the works, yes, they are supposed to be completed by the end of March. Obviously, um, circumstances are not especially easy at the moment in terms of accessing people's homes, and so we are hoping that. Um, there will be some leeway, especially if people have already got, um, have applied for the scheme, had an assessment done, and we're trying to schedule the works, then we're hoping that there might be some leeway there. At the moment, it, it's supposed to be by the end of March, but we are hopeful that this might get a little bit of an extension, but we, we can't say that for sure because we haven't had an announcement from, uh, from government, the government department that's running it. Can I just ask a linked question, which somebody yes. else also asked on the chat? You you said it's not eligible for gas spoilers, but what is the alternative, like the eco alternative to that? So that would be heat pumps, Russell. If if you you know much more about it than I do. Um, yeah. So um, the alternative is uh, something called uh, uh, well, in Wandsworth, it's most more likely to be an air source heat pump, but it could be a ground source heat pump. But uh, air source heat pump because uh, you know. We might have to talk about budgets with Andrew, but they, they, the, the, the average price of a heat pump in London at the moment is, is above £10,000. Um, so, you know, it, it, it really depends on your situation, uh, whether you've got if you've got a smaller a property, therefore the cost might come down a little. Sometimes, uh, though, heat pumps, um, whilst they're, <clears throat> they're, they're not new technology, uh, the industry is still getting used to them, householders are getting used to them. Um, you might have to, we might have to look at your radiator sizes and they might have to get bigger as well. This is where some of the costs go up. So it won't, I saw one of the questions earlier on was, can you replace a gas boiler with an electric boiler? I, I think nobody on their right mind would do that ever, let alone this scheme pay for it. But an air source heat pump, which is different, um, uh, is, is about, is about uh, it's, it, will have, it would end up with a significant drop in the uh, carbon emissions of the property. Um, <clears throat> if done in the right way, you want to see an energy saving, but on the whole, you'll find that the energy bills will be about the same. It's about the carbon emissions of your property that will be substantially, substantially improved by that. And that's what the government is really aiming for with this programme to make sure everyone is, is warmer um, and more comfortable, but also we're saving the planet. So that's why that technology is being pushed through this and not gas boilers. <clears throat> Great. Thank you very much. Um, so does anyone else have any other questions? Because we are happy to answer any questions you have about the Green Homes Grant. Or re to be honest, any questions about retrofit in general and, and energy efficiency in homes. Because yep. uh, yeah, we, we're here and, and we do have we do have an expert here to do that. Uh, Pamela. Hi, um, I live in a leasehold flat. Um, does that matter? Does that have any bearing on the situation? Can I apply like anyone else? Um, yeah, I mean, our experience is uh, that, that, that actually the only thing that we need to make sure of is that your freehold uh, uh, freeholder is, is it gives permission for the work that we do. So uh, you know, it, you, you'll know with whatever your in your leasehold agreement, you know what what you can do without their permission. Very likely, even things like ground floor, underfloor insulation. If you're on a ground floor flat, that 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 space under the floorboard might not be yours, or if you're you've got a loft space, then that the loft space might not be yours, or punching holes through walls might not be allowed. So 
it's it's not a, necessarily a question of what this scheme will pay for because if you if you remember what Andrew said, if you you could be a tenant entirely and, and still be accessible to the scheme, so it's really about the logistics and the and the permissions involved. Unless Andrew, you've got a def, another sort of angle on that. No, no, that, that's entirely right. It, it does depend on what your uh, what your leasehold allows you to do within the property, and that can vary from building to building depending on on when that that was that was taken out so um if you're eligible then it's worth um getting in touch um but uh please but yeah it, it's it's worth signing up to the scheme but just to be aware that um there may be some limitations around what can be done so it might not be quite what you had in mind at first but i'm sure there's some sort of work that could be done thanks i mean luckily enough um all the leaseholders have own the freehold. So I, oh. I actually run the freehold company. So obtaining permission, I, I can't imagine would be a problem at all. <laughs> they, so I, there I, we I, are. <laughs> but, but I think what you said was right. It, that's all very well and good, but I need to find out what can be done to the loft space, for instance, because although mm. I, I have access to it and I'm allowed to use it, I don't think technically it belongs to me. Yeah, as such I so I'd, I'd, I'd um yeah so that, that that was that was helpful just to bring that up anyway thank you well so if, if you're eligible uh why, why don't you just call the office uh and uh, we can just have a chat about it um it's a virtual office the, the phone number will come through to us even though we're at home um and we could talk i mean I, i've done plenty of buildings in and around south london that have this particular issue and you might even be in a situation where well if if, if, if insulation that's been rolled out there and somebody doesn't like it, well, you can roll it back up again. Um, you know, it doesn't. The, the, often insulation in this instance isn't necessarily a, a big, a massive undertaking that you need to be too worried about. But you know, uh, it might well be that all your neighbours want to do it as well, and they might all qualify. So give them all the emails. <laughs> so yeah, great. <laughs> so are you going to provide contact details in the chat or by email yeah. after this, please? Uh, yes, I'll I'll put it up in the chat. Um, and also um, we'll send an email around to, to everyone at the end just so everyone's got the, the email address. Thank you. OK, um, I think there's a question from Paul. Hello, yes, um, I was the one who mentioned the electric boilers. Um, Russell, could you explain mm -hmm. perhaps why you wouldn't do that? Um, um, as far as I'm aware, new build high rises in, in England and London are not putting gas boilers in. Yeah, there's a very um, specific reason for that, Paul. It's because the landlords or the freeholders don't want to pay for annual gas uh, safety checks. Um, if you were, if you did a like for like swap of a gas boiler with an electric boiler, your bills would go up by three times, and so would your carbon emissions uh, for the exact same amount of heat and hot water coming out. Uh, so I really wouldn't advise it. Okay. Um, well, carbon emissions just because the electricity would be generated by something um, that yes, yeah, exactly. unless unless you had a green energy tariff, which I do. Uh, all right, well, carbon emissions will be less of an issue, but I think that the cost potentially will still be. go up. Okay, even though they're more efficient. The, that is uh, that <laughs> everyone says that 100% efficiency for electric is, is 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 obviously quoted by the manufacturers, but still got to transfer that heat through the radiators into your building, so you've got a loss of efficiency there as well. Um, um, electric panel heaters are 100% efficient, but electric boilers certainly aren't. Okay, and if I was replacing a boiler which was 50 years old, say, would yep. that that would it would still increase my cost? You think? You've obviously got a very dreadful baseline to work from. I have, yes. point. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think I honestly, I still think it would be uh, it, you'd be worse off. But what I always say to everybody is to try and get an assessment. If you don't qualify for the scheme, uh, as I mentioned to uh, the uh, to Suzanne earlier on, um, have a look at the Ecoferb website. It's actually got a little handy tool that you can go on for free and put your address in, and you can do a little bit of modelling on your own property straight off. Um, so you can even you can even see what an air source heat pump impact might be compared to your existing boiler, but it won't have the finite detail of just how old your boiler is <laughs> in there. Uh, sure. That a little, little bit of uh, other expertise in the background, but just just have a look and see what you think. What's what's the website address? Sorry, um, ecoferb e c o f u r b dot com. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. 
OK, so does anyone else have some questions? We did get a few pre-submitted questions sent through, so we can talk through that if, if that would be helpful. Um, so one of them was around um, replacing a front door and whether um, that person should uh, buy them myself or use an installer and uh, that they can't find an installer. Um, so uh, one of the things with that is that um, replacement doors are, are potentially part of Green Homes Grant, so that could be part of the overall package. Um, to be honest, it probably wouldn't just be that because the aim with this is to try to to lift the the property from the rating up to where at all possible is a C rating from an EF or G up to a C. So it means probably some more significant improvements than just just a front door. Um, but that certainly could be part of the measures that we put in. Um, another question that came, um, and maybe Russell, if, if you could help with this, um, how can I identify where I'm losing heat and what can be done about it? Well, on, on the one hand, we can do um, uh, an, an assessment in the, in the same way that we described this right now. But there are other technologies that are available, particularly when the weather, the weather is a little colder as it is now. You can do something called uh, thermal imaging, um, so you can get infrared cameras that can sh show you literally live uh, where your heat is leaving your building that's quite fun um i don't know whether ones would have have one uh, or i think crew energy might have one that they they, they often uh, they do little uh, visits to people's homes so if you've not heard of them it's a great uh, organization based in ones with yes. uh, crew energy um so i think they do thermal imaging visits to homes that's that's quite fun um, um otherwise uh the, the, if you really want to get geeky you can do something called an air tightness test which is uh, usually used to test new homes to see whether they're leaky or not. Um, it's a kind of a, a hidden factor within uh, people's overall energy uh, energy bills to understand whether uh, your, your drafts are significant or not. And this kind of test enables you to do that. Um, but one, one thing I would say uh, is, is to just bear in mind some of the key stats. Um, for a typical UK home, around about uh, um, 75% of, of a typical home's energy bill for the entire year is heating. So uh, all the gas or electricity going through your heat source and going into your building will be uh, that cost. And that's only, that, that's only coming out of your radiators and out of your heaters because it's being lost in other places. If you've got a building that's got a lot of surface area, you know, for instance, it's a, I don't know, if you've got an end of terrace and you've got three walls that are a lot of um, a heat loss, um, you know, chances are it's your walls that's a problem. If you've got a very large amount of that surface area that's got windows and doors, as is very common on some of the very older properties on the main roads in around Wandsworth, it'll be your windows and your doors that are, 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 are a big problem too. Um, if you live in a flat on a ground floor, you haven't got much air, you haven't got much external wall, uh, your floor is going to be your problem. So you can generally look, think about it from the perspective of all those aspects there. And hot water generally is, is as you, you probably already guessed, is quite a small proportion of your overall energy consumption, but it still is a quite a big win for you to stop having a bath and have a shower instead. Uh, just overnight, you can you can save yourself quite a lot of money. So there are rules of thumb you can work with. It doesn't have to be all about analysis. <clears throat> Brilliant. Thanks a lot for that, Russell. Um, a, another uh, question that came in uh, before the event was, um, that if they have gas central heating, are they still entitled to apply for the scheme? Uh, oh. And so, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there are things we, we we want to be able to make sure you use as little as that gas central heating as possible. So, the point about all of this stuff is to reduce the need for heat. Mm -hmm. uh, we we've got the opportunity to change your heat source, but if you've got a, a boiler that's one year old, you know, you're not going to want to change it. You know, so it's still under warranty and all that stuff. Uh, so we, we can uh, try to reduce the need for heat, reduce your uh, your heat losses in every way we can. And that's why we do our modelling to show that uh, which way to do it best. Brilliant. Um, so does anybody else have any other questions at all? It sounds like no. Um, so um, in that case, then. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you, Russell, for uh, for coming and, and sharing your, your knowledge with everyone. And that's super useful. Um, and um, I, I do hope that you've um, got a lot out of this, this meeting and um, but also that you're interested in um, in applying to, to join the Green Homes Grant. And uh, yeah, if you could um, 
send us an email. Um, it's greenhomesgrant at wandsworth.gov.uk or you can go onto the Wandsworth web, uh, Council website and you can find the information there. If you type in Green Homes Grant or GHG, you'll be able to find the information. Uh, we've got lots of stuff on there around frequently asked questions, exactly what you need to do in terms of um, getting an application in. And we have uh, we have a, a dedicated team that, that's, that's working on climate change and that's supporting this. So um, we are there to sort of help you. And if you've got questions, we will uh, answer you as fast as we possibly can. So, um, Thank you very much for coming along and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.